everybody, and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Comics Weekend Review. You know, this is the little thing we do where we talk about the comics we right. bought and read during the week. Every weekend. Yeah, every weekend we try and get this done. We've done pretty good so far, you yeah, know? Yeah, we've done it every week that we said we're going to... The first week that we said we're going to try to do it every week, we've done it We've done week. it every weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, again, these are all the comics that came out. That would be crazy talk. Hey, one of my tapes tore. That's not cool. Oh, man, I don't remember what last Wednesday was. What day of the week it was. Was that like a... Six? No way. Was that... I don't remember, man. Wish I had a calendar with me. What's the day? I have no idea. 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th. Maybe it was the 5th. Was it February 5th? I don't know. I'll put it along the bottom. You'll find out. Uh, when you're, well, you're watching this video, so you know what the video is called, so you know what we can, what, what right. releases this is. Let's jump right into it. This is an all-Marvel week. I don't think I picked up anything non-Marvel. All-new X-Men, issue 7. Uh, this is the book from Marvel Now, where the original X-Men team has been brought to the, the current time, uh, by Beast, to kind of yeah. confront Cyclops and tell him what a terrible thing he's doing mm -hmm. right now. And now they've decided to stay. Uh, in the last issue, Cyclops kind of took off because he's freaked out about what everything's going on. Young Cyclops, Wolverine went after him. So you pick up there, and Cyclops is still kind of away from the mansion. And he goes to a bank to get a safety deposit box, and uh, he runs into... Um, Mystique? Yeah, as you can tell by the cover that he runs into Mystique. He runs into her in a strange way at first, and then we find out right. it's Mystique. Uh, and then it's just interaction between Mystique and Cyclops. Uh, and her kind of establishing what he should be doing while he's there and stuff like that. Watch your feet there, bud. Um, great writing again. I'm still, like, loving this book. Uh, it's written by Bendis. Uh, I think it is. I'm, I think it's pretty pretty kid appropriate. Uh, it, I'm just really enjoying the... the I, next issue, they're going to meet up with the Avengers. That's pretty the, the Avengers are going to meet with the original X-Men. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, it's before... It, this takes, that comic takes place before the Versus thing, right? Uh, uh, Versus is all over them. What are you talking about? Avengers vs. X-Men? Yeah, when Beast goes back in time... No, this is at all after Avengers vs. X-Men. Yes, but when Beast went back in time, is that time Oh, before? yeah, oh, yeah, that's a long time ago. Okay. When they were kids, it's oh. a long time ago. Okay. Um, so, yeah, when they meet them, it's gonna be probably the X-Men's... These younger X-Men, the first time they're ever gonna meet the Avengers, probably. Right. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoy this book. It, it may end up being my pick of the week. Um, it's just consistently good every single time. And I'm not a Bendis fan, but this book isn't written like a Bendis book. I really enjoy this book. If you're going to pick up Marvel Now titles, I would put this on my, my top three current titles. Yeah. Very good book. Just throw that anywhere. <laughs> uh, Avengers. This is the regular Avengers book that you now my tape is all messed up and that's not making me happy. Uh, this is the regular, regular Avengers book. We're on issue five now. This is the second week in a row this has come out? Yes. The third week in a row, something third. like that? That's too much. Wait, it's not the original Avengers. It has a lot of it isn't the original. Avengers. No, well, it's 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 the regular Avengers book, not original. Oh. Yeah. So it's not the regular. Uh, yeah, it's Avengers. it's all over the place. In this last issue, we found out about Hyperion. I think it was right. Yes, Hyperion. This issue, we find out about Super Guardian, where this character comes from and her origin. That's basically the entire story. It involves the Shi'ar Empire and her becoming part of the Imperial Guard, and ties to an old vintage character. That isn't really a Marvel character. I think he's maybe in the public domain. That's her grandfather, and I won't say who it is because it kind of spoils something from the book. Um, the art is great by Kubert, but again, I just don't care that much about these characters. I, I don't want it. If this was another book, it wasn't called Avengers. If it was called like Marvel uh, Now uh, Hero Spotlights or something like that, I would dig it. But not as the Avengers book. This is not my Avengers team. I'm not really digging these extra characters. Not my thing. My Avengers Next. That would be a cool name for this book. My um, Avengers team is the movie Avengers, with the exception of Vision, Ant-Man and Wasp, and Black Panther. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down with that too. I want a classic Avengers team. I don't want all these newbies. This is the one Blaze read this week. Right. Avengers Assemble Annual, number one. Uh, this one is... More? What's that? There's going to be more than one? Oh, well, an annual is they do one per year, usually, if they stick with it. Um, and so it's like a special it'll issue. Will be a new character next year, or they're going to continue with Vision? No, well, it'll be just based on the Avengers. It just so happens that this one is based on the Vision. It oh. can be any kind of story. It's just kind of a separate story from the regular run. It's okay. just like a special. Um, this one is all about Vision, reintroducing Vision into Avengers, since he was destroyed not too long ago, and now he's back. And kind of him 
coming to terms with where he's at emotionally, if he has emotions. Right. Um, it involves the Centurion, who's this Roxxon sort of hired hero, and where he's at, and how he's going to be kind of left behind by Roxxon, and how Vision's kind of feeling as being kind of left behind by the Avengers. They didn't really fix him right that, like that. Um, Vision was married to Scarlet Witch. You didn't know that? Yeah. Never. I yep. don't know much about Vision. Well, yeah, they had a, a, a long-standing relationship. Um, and then Scarlet Witch had this whole House of M thing and went I, crazy. And... I'm not, I, that's actually my first thing reading that had Vision in it. Oh, really? Yes. I like Vision. I've seen him a couple times in the I like Vision. Section. I think he's a cool character. Yeah, what did you think of this book? It was okay. I liked it. Um, it wasn't a great story, and it wasn't great art. We got Christopher Gage doing the story and Tom Cooker doing the art. Um, I wouldn't say it's a great book, but it was a fun yeah. book. You know, I thought it was fine. I liked Vision a lot, and it was nice to just do kind of a standalone story right. that's separate from everything else. Um, we won't tell you how it ends, how Vision, where Vision ends up. If he's on the team, if he's not on the team, right. what's happening? Um, it's worth a read. I, I enjoyed it. If you're a Vision fan, you'll definitely dig it. Um, and that was the only book you read this week, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Fearless Defenders Issue 1. This is the premiere of this Marvel Now series, yep. which is going to unite like a bunch of just kind of random Marvel heroes under one team. That's kind of what the Defenders always has been, sort of random odd pairings and an odd team. In this issue, it's uh, Misty Knight, I think is her name, and Valkyrie. Uh, on uh, how they first, I guess they're the beginning of this team. And I gotta say, I wasn't incredibly intrigued by the story, and I'm not incredibly intrigued um, by this team as of yet. I guess once more team members are added on, I'll get more into it. This whole storyline revolves around Misty Knight getting this um, artifact and giving it to her uh, archaeologist friend, and it's kind of like a music box thing, and it gets activated, and these zombie Vikings, you got blowing nose or something like that? Yeah. They get these zombie Viking things that come along, mm -hmm. and... So they're kind of attacking, and then Valkyrie shows up to, to help them. There's an odd kiss in the middle of the thing that's just totally out of place in the story. Um, and then it's just them kind of teaming up at the end. And the next issue, I guess we're going to have another character, and then it's going to slowly build. I'll stick with it, especially I want to see what the full team ends up being. Right. But as of now, this was not an incredibly compelling story. Cool art, but not a really compelling story. Um, Iron Man issue 6. This is the first part of the God Killer storyline where after the whole thing with Extremis, Tony Stark Iron Man has decided, you know, humanity needs to expand and evolve or whatever, and so yeah. he's heading out into space for kind of space adventures. He's got a new AI, not Jarvis, it's now Pepper. So it's kind of like Pepper Potts is with him almost, like this computer intelligence Pepper. Right. Uh, in this issue, he meets up with this alien race and kind of saves them. Um, has a, sort of a date type thing with this the, the female, I guess, ruler of this, this alien race. Um, and at the end, he gets confronted about being the god killer, basically. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm not a huge fan of this new armor design. I think the whole weird thing around the eyes and the mouth, kind of like, it's almost like a Iron Man Batman cowl. Like, he's got it on over yeah. his thing. It's kind of weird. Um, but I'm interested to see where it goes. Right. You know, the whole, uh, you know, blaming him for the death of the Phoenix thing from Avengers vs. X-Men could be kind of fun. Um, Iron Man Issue 3, Prelude Issue 2. This is kind of setting up where Iron Man 3 is going to be, uh, bridging the gap between Iron Man 2 to Iron Man 3, finding out why like things like why Rhodey wasn't at the big New York battle of Avengers, of Avengers um, where this new War Machine armor came from. That's established in these two issues, and it all leads up to um, where we're going to be at Iron Man 3, cool. where Stark is after Avengers and how he feels after the New York invasion, um, how Rhodey's got that new suit and where he's at with his character, how the Mandarin and the Ten Rings ga uh, organization ties into everything. Uh, art is by S Kurth, I think his name is Steve Kurth or Scott Kurth, I can't remember his first name. And the writing is by Gage again, who also wrote the Avengers uh, symbol annual. Uh, this has been a fun two-part story. I, I like that we're putting this out now, because Iron Man 2's kind of been a while, right. so it's nice to see you know, kind of remind you of where things are can to read I these two read issues. Or... Definitely, you can definitely read those two issues. Uh, New Avengers issue three. This is by Hickman with Steve Epting art. Uh, in the last issue, we just, we found out that the heroes are going to rebuild the Infinity Gauntlet right. to stop the worlds from colliding. Mm -hmm. So they do that in this issue. They, they rebuild the Infinity Gauntlet. They get the replacement for Professor X, since Professor X is dead. You got something in your teeth? Yeah. You need to get it now, or you're just waiting until it's over? I'll wait until We're it's almost over. through. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, we find out who the replacement is, who, who Charles Xavier picked as the replacement, and we get the Infinity Gauntlet rebuilt, it doesn't work though. 
And so now they're, I guess they're at the point where they feel like they have to destroy a world in order to save their world. The Illuminati has decided on that. There's one character in particular who does not agree to that plan, and the repercussions of him not agreeing with the rest of them is at the end of this issue, and I won't ruin that. This has been the first issue of New Avengers that I've really kind of thought was pretty solid. Um, yeah. Especially its portrayal of one character in particular, I thought was well done. Which one's New Avengers? Uh, that's the one where it's got the Illuminati, where it's got Tony Stark, Reed Richards, Black Panther. Oh, uh, the smart team. Yeah, the, the smart team, basically. Namor. Um... I, I enjoyed that one, and now I'm very curious to see where it's going. Maybe some of the decisions that's made by some of the other characters, other than the one character I'm talking about, which I won't say, um, it's kind of weird to see them making these kind of decisions, as in they're heroes and they would always find a way, but I'm interested to see where the story goes, so I'm going to cut it some slack for now. Superior Spider-Man number three. I still don't like this book, but I will say it's better than the last one. At least it's not just him trying to date Mary Jane the entire time. This, what is, what's well, next, him dating Quinn Jake? Gwen Stacy? Yeah, Gwen. Well, it'd be a corpse if he was dating Gwen Stacy. Uh, so, in this issue, it's just him and going after the vulture. We finally get one character that's really suspecting that... Hey, wait a second. Yeah, stop doing that with your mouth. Okay. But, um, we got one character that's really suspecting that it's maybe not Peter Parker. That something else is going on. Who? Um, I'm not going to say, because I don't ruin it. Uh, but you got one character in particular that's questioning it. That's, at, towards the end, is finally going, wait a second, something's not right here. Which... All along, somebody should have been questioning it. Um, I really... Mary Jane. Exactly. I really don't like this book. I really can't wait for the Doc Ock thing to be over with. I'm really already tired of the ghost Parker that's, like, floating around. Um, it's not as bad in this issue as last issue, but it's still bad. This book reminds me of going to see Batman and Robin at the theater. It does? It does. Because each... When I went to see Batman and Robin at the theater, I knew it was going to be bad. But I still had hope because it was Batman. In right. the Batman movie, I thought, well, there'll probably be something good in there that I'll enjoy. There, there's got to be something in there. And then it ended up being, like, the worst two hours of my life up to that point. Maybe the worst two hours of my life ever. So that's the way it is with this book. And ke each issue I keep thinking, well, it's Marvel now Spider-Man. There's got to be something I'm going to enjoy, right. right? It's got Spider-Man in it. There's got to be something I'll find to enjoy. And I never find anything to no, enjoy. It might, be, it might be Peterson. Hopefully. Get rid of the stupid Doc Ock storyline. Uh, the Thunderbolts issue four, written by Daniel Way with art by Steve Dillon. Um, we're following along with the Red Hulk's team of all these vigilante type characters, right. and they're in this air, this foreign nation where there's sort of a gamma attack, and there's uh, a guerrilla movement. At the end of last issue, Punisher put a bullet in the leader's skull, which Red Hulk has somehow decided that the leader is a key to doing all this stuff, because we find out that the villain in this piece is the leader's brother. And somehow he's going to use the leader to do this. So he's upset at the beginning. Red Hulk takes off with the leader. Um, and the rest of this issue, we're trying to get Elektra out of the clutches of this bad guy. And there's a lot of cool interactions between Deadpool and Punisher. Some great lines in there. Um, Venom's involved in the storyline, obviously. Uh, this has been the one where I felt like the book has kind of returned to what it was. The last two issues, eh. The first issue was great. The last two issues, eh. This one I really enjoyed, though. You did? I liked this one a lot. And I'm, I'm liking where it's going to go. And I'm really hopeful where this, this ends up. Leader um, has a brother? He does. That's him on the cover. Alright, the last book for the week is Winter Soldier issue 15. And this is the new creative team of Latour and Klein taking over for um, Ed Brubaker and Butch Geis, who I loved on this book. A lot of people are dropping this book because they're off the, the book now. They're writer and artist. And they're kinda, people are kind of worried that it's going to get cancelled. Or it may have already been cancelled for all I know. Uh, I gotta say though, I thought it was fine. I mean, it was a brew raker, but I thought it was fine. It's basically Winter Soldier has now decided to kind of go back and make amends for the things he's done and the, the people whose lives he's hurt. Um, he's kind of on a kind of this was my life type tour. Um, and he's going to make amends. And Nick Fury comes along and gives him some information about one guy in particular whose life he's affected, who's an undercover S.H.I.E.L.D. agent that's buried deep in the Hydra. And right as he goes to confront him, this guy blows his cover and is involved in this whole Hydra thing. Um, and so Winter Soldier has to come in and help him. I thought the art was good. I thought the writing was, was solid. It wasn't Brubaker, of course, but it was solid. And I'm interested to see where the story goes. Right. I, I think it's... We're, I'm glad we're kind of moving past the Black Widow storyline and we're moving on to something else. Mm -hmm. um, instead of just repeating that in this issue, him going maybe to find out how to get Black Widow's memories back or all these different things. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. And I hope other people stick with it, too, and at least give these guys a chance. Right. And that is it for the week. That is all our books. I have a cat hair on me. And now I don't. Um...
Obviously, your pick of the week was Avengers Assemble, because that's all you read this week. Yep. Mine was either All New X-Men or Thunderbolts, but I'm, I'm thinking it was All New X-Men. I, I really enjoy All New X-Men every single time I enjoy it. I look right. forward to that book. I really do. Is that, the one, you, is that the one you look forward to the most every week? No, 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 no. My, my first, my, my fa you mean I look forward to the new issue each time? Because they're all on weird schedules. The one I look forward to the most is Thor, and then Captain America, and then All New X-Men. Mm -hmm. Those are my three tops of the Marvel Now books. The one I look least forward to that I used to read was that re regular That regular movie. Avengers? Yeah. I dropped that book. Yeah. But you're picking up Avengers Assemble. Yes. Starting with the next uh, regular issue. The next story I don't I don't know. I don't know what the next I probably had an ad in the back of that, I didn't even bother to look. Yeah, we'll okay. do it after the video. Alright, so we'll sign off on this one and we'll see you guys again next week. Keep reading them comics. Bye.